I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. So today is kind of a sad day. I love my little Nash, but today I have to say goodbye to it. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, you just bought this car uh, not that long ago. We did a little video when I went out looking for an old car and it's been fantastic. The heater works great. I got ice tires on it. It's been getting around in winter just fine. If you can see out my window, it's snowy and icy and the car handles it great. What happened was a customer came into my store. It was parked outside the shop and he <laughs> said, uh, really cool car, would you sell it? And I said, oh no, like I couldn't possibly sell it. Um, and, he, and he asked me kind of what I was into it for and I told him and then he gave me 2000 bucks and said, great, I'll take it. <laughs> and I guess in that moment I thought, ah, what the heck, I'll sell the car. But afterwards I regretted it instantly um, because I love it, I like the little car and I phoned him back and tried to give him his deposit back on the car but it was too late at that point. So he's coming today and reluctantly the car is going which means I'm gonna have to find something else later today and uh, probably end up settling on getting a normal car, which will be just like a regular blah, <laughs> you know, like a regular car. And I know everybody has a regular car. My wife drives a normal car. And I consider a regular car like every single car, <laughs> except for like 5% of the cars out there. So for me, it's kind of depressing to have to go get a new vehicle, but um, that's gonna be happening today. But fear not, I have a couple uh, things on the go and a couple other project cars that I'm gonna be working on soon. So I still have the old ambulance and some other cool stuff. So uh, lots of old cars, but today we have to get this car ready for uh, the new owner to pick it up and go find another car. What am I gonna find? I don't know, let's go look. And I have to say that looking for a replacement car for the one you're driving kind of feels like you're cheating on it. I feel guilty about looking for another car while I'm driving my Nash currently, but that's what I got to do is this is kind of my car right now. So we are going to stop at a couple places and see what there is, whether we should get another classic or something a little bit newer. So this is what I ended up going for. It is a 2006 BMW XI. Now you might be thinking, Alex, what are you doing? This is not a, you know, <laughs> an ideal car for a guy who has an antique store. Well, it's going to be a wheelbarrow for me. Uh, we're just checking it over, making sure everything's okay, and it seems to be checking out all right. So the car should be coming home tonight. My wife will be happy, I'm sure, because it does have a back seat for three people, and the condition overall is pretty good. Now, I normally buy my cars privately, but in this case, I bought it off of a dealership. Now, reason being, um, these folks had a really high review online, EEC Automotive. Um, never dealt with them before. They seemed really friendly. We hammered out a deal within minutes here, so it went really well. And um, you know, you wanna check the reviews of a place. That's the nice thing about social media now. In the old days, you had no idea whether the, the place was gonna be uh, reputable or not. But in this case, these guys were really highly reviewed. So I felt uh, you know, a little bit more of uh, comfort there. Plus, um, it's the end of the year and sometimes uh, dealerships wanna get their cars off the lot before year end. So we're able to strike a pretty good deal. So uh, I'm picking up the car tonight or tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm still driving the old Nash. Oh, I'm gonna miss this car. <laughs> but at least I'll have a good little family run around. And the BMW is all wheel drive. So um, in our climate, that's not a bad thing to have. So this is it, my first drive in the car. We're gonna uh, pop inside and check it out. Overall, the condition's not bad on this vehicle. Uh, purchase price was pretty decent. It was $4,000 US. And uh, for a car in this kind of condition, that's not too bad. So in terms of buying a used car, this one's not too bad. The dashboard is nice. Uh, it's got the Burlwood trim. It's got the tan leather interior. And overall, it's a very clean vehicle. Uh, it does have uh, about, <laughs> I guess, 110,000 miles on it. So it has a bit for mileage on it, but these cars will last a really long time. And I only need this thing to last me just a few years even. Um, so it should be fine for getting around in winter. So all in all, um, so far it seems pretty good. We're gonna take it for a test drive and see how she goes. It's gonna take a little getting used to the key in this car. I'm so used to an old fashioned key, which is just in my mind, like a normal key. This thing is a combination push button and what feels like a cassette that you kind of put in, and that's how old I am, I can use that reference. It's like putting an 8-track in the 8-track player, like putting a cassette in a cassette player. So the key kind of just sits in there. So I gotta remember, you know, the two steps now to push the button and then take the key out when you're turning it off or vice versa. Um, yeah. 
but I did notice a bonus in this particular car and that is above my head. I didn't notice that this car had the panoramic sunroof option, so that's a really big sunroof uh, that goes all the way basically back to the rear passenger compartment. So I'm gonna check it out and see if it works. Um, so far, everything else has been in pretty good working condition, but we're gonna try this out and see if it goes. Yeah, that's it there. So open or closed or open or closed or open. Oh, uh oh, just kidding, it's fine. That's one heck of a big sunroof, but I love the outdoors. I love the sun coming in, so that's not so bad. I mean, all in all, this is a pretty decent car, and as much as I love my little Nash, I still do have a couple classic cars at home. I still have that MGB convertible. I've got the old ambulance and a race car. I've got enough stuff to keep me busy. I don't need uh, you know an extra old vehicle as much as I love that thing. So this will get me around. It's basically a wheelbarrow and. You know, it's gonna be good for hauling stuff and my family and my kids. Not that I would, actually I have put my kids in a wheelbarrow too, I've done that. <laughs> but you know, the nice thing about driving an older car like this is that um, this car was pretty expensive new. You know, it was over $60,000 new and um, I only paid four grand for it. And it hasn't been that long. That's crazy depreciation on these sorts of cars. But you know, uh, when people see you, they don't know if you're the guy that paid the 60, 70,000 bucks for a car like this, or if you're the guy who bought it for next to nothing. So you still have a little bit of that um, European car mystique where they think you might've been the guy to pay all the money for it. But in this case, I didn't. Um, when I was looking around at other ads, you know, you could get a used truck with rust on it or kind of a beat up minivan for around the same price. So to get a car, um, which is fairly nice, you know, it's a 06 BMW, you know, it's got a little bit of miles on it, but overall condition is perfect uh, for 4,000 bucks US, uh, that's not a bad deal. So um, I'm feeling like I made an okay investment and I have a little bit of money in my pocket left over to put into some of my other projects from selling the Nash. So gonna miss that car. It was a fantastic little vehicle, the Nash, but this will get me around this winter. And after driving a classic all winter long, you kind of take um, for granted some things that newer cars have, like heated seats or a radio that actually works. So there are a few things that this car has that uh, <laughs> I'm uh, grateful for, but uh, certainly doesn't have the charm of an older vehicle. So all in all, the car is pretty good. There is one little issue though, and that's I've got a burnt out headlight. So having a burnt out headlight seems like a pretty easy thing to fix, but not in this case. The bulb, I just put a new one in. It's not the bulb. The powerful headlights in this car require a ballast and the ballast is not accessible from the hood or any normal place you'd think of. You actually have to take the headlight out. Now, if you do that, you have to take some bolts off which are underneath the bumper. So you have to remove the entire front clip of the car, well not the clip, but the bumper, off just to get the headlight out and then you can replace it. The part itself is not terribly expensive, but what a lot of labor to do that. Now I've contacted the dealership to see if maybe they'll help me out since I drove it off the lot and they said it was good and it ended up not being okay. Now I should say the car is actually pretty good and a headlight, maybe they didn't know the headlight was wrong with it, but we're gonna see if they can help us out. But I probably won't hear back until after Christmas. But I can't complain too much. I mean, what do you expect? It's an older vehicle, it's a 2006. A headlight ballast is not that big of a deal. I think it was about $56 for it shipped. I'll get that in, I'll have some time in the near future to put that in and get it installed in my garage. But the plus side of buying an older vehicle like this one is that I did still have some money left over to buy an old vehicle, a project. So we're gonna go do a little shopping today. I know of a place that has a few old cars, a friend of mine has some in the basement of their uh, garage there. So we're gonna go have a look and see if there's something cool we can bring home. There are parkades all over every city pretty much and you never know what's gonna be down inside of them. So in this case, there's a few classic cars down here and one has been sitting for decades and might be coming up for sale soon. Vacuum vacuum dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here's one of our auction sales. Uh, two Buicks we had going through the auction. Dueling. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. Well, the Sandy's been doing this. He's a pro at it, so he's been doing it for uh, ever since he was when. <laughs> <laughs> 68 Eldorado in emerald green. Yeah. And it looks like this one's still. Truly the, one of the world's most beautiful taillights. I can't think of any, any nicer than those taillights. Oh, they're a very interesting looking car. They only came in the hard top. Yeah. Wasn't until 
a couple of years later, they brought up the convertible. So it's 71, I guess. Nice, nice car. So what year is this? 36. 36 Buick. Is it a... What, what's the model? Special, it's a okay. Car, but, you know, let's just see. See if she'll start. The battery might be a little low. Yeah, you may have to charge that up a little bit. It's, it really runs well. And it looks like they had the door panels out. Yeah, they're everything. I mean, the inside got to be done. The inside's no but the rest of it is good. Oh, there we go. Just about. Gas up there. Thirty-six is a really nice styling here. Beautiful front end, waterfall grill. Oh, beautiful car. Oh, there she is. There she goes. Nice car, and it is for sale. Oh, beautiful! Thirty-nine Buick, another one. The little brother to the uh, Royal car. That's right. Okay, so what's the story with this car? It was given to her by her father when she was sixteen. Yeah. She's had it. All this time. Since brand new. Since brand new. Now it's been fully restored. Um, Even new vinyl. Right? Very detailed restoration. The only problem is about the three. And the correct top <laughs> and the correct color. Challenger. Oh, what is this, a 73 or 74? 74. 74. 74. Yeah. And even the correct gas cap. She had it all redone last year. Yeah. It gave us all a headache. Oh. This is quite the parkade. I mean, there's all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, there's even an old Windsor convertible yeah, sitting here. Yeah, it's a mystery car. It's been here for years. It's had a bit of a, a bit of a collision in the back end there. For hundred bucks, we'd all like to get our hands on it, but we don't know who owns it. Oh, yeah, one day. I, I, I've been in Quebec City with one of these, and yeah. it's at uh, Carnival. Four of us scrambling into this. Thing. What a beautiful car. And so, when was the last time this was on the road? Ten years ago. Ten years. It's been sitting here. I mean, I, just here. And I don't, I don't know, honestly, uh, much more about it. Very cool. Original. Corvette? So what, 76 or 17? Yeah, yeah. He's the one with the tall plastic bumper. Yeah. Oh, what was, what was that bumper we had, Sandy? Did you see it on the Corvette that Swift had? And it was all deteriorated, this oh, thing. No, I didn't see it. Yeah. There's something under here. It's a stately looking a car. Flathead six. The, the back end is a little bit more intact than the front end. Well, it has, at some point, somebody roller brushed the paint on the back here. That's okay. What year is it? I don't know. It's a, well, it's a flathead six vertical, so it's got to be in the 50s. 50s or? A two door hard top. Yeah, it's probably a 49 or a 50. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, this is the dashboard the, off for you. And Mark II is made. Now, what's typical amongst the guys, they have five speed transmissions put into them and a Ford rear end because the originals were. So, you have a. What year is this Fury? 70. 70 Plymouth Fury Suburban Wagon. Yeah. What does it have under the hood? 318. 318, but, okay. But somebody put a three speed tranny in the thing. And three speed? Yeah, a three speed standard. It should have a 440 and a big Krako It's on the floor, isn't it? It's a it's yeah. a four about it. And it needs a total yeah. interior. But it's a shifter all there. Done. Paint's all done. Body's all done. It's got a roof. Yeah. There are a lot of guys who like these old Trans Ams. Oh, yeah, you know, when, when, when I'm here, they, they weren't in the Mercedes and BMWs then. They were in yeah. the Trans Ams and Camaros. Yeah. And they just love them. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah they, they sort of uh, slowly uh, started. So at some point, someone had a collision with this car. 
The driver's side front end obviously has a bit of a crinkle in it. Well, let's not say that's a crinkle, that's a pretty serious hit. But these are becoming scarce and desirable vehicles. This being an Alfa Romeo 1600. We look at the interior. Original seats. And still does have the engine intact. Judging by the chalk on the windshield, or the wax, I'd say this was purchased from an insurance company. Let me get the light on here. And you can see they must have hit the steering wheel pretty hard because they actually sheared it right off. So somebody broke the steering wheel when they hit it. But the dashboard is amazing. Really good condition. And Looks like it was a low mileage vehicle, fairly low mileage. It must have been driven up until recently because I can see it had a uh, more modern stereo deck put on it. So it was probably parked in the maybe early 80s, somewhere around there is my understanding. So it's going to need a fair bit of work. But again, desirable little car. interior looks really decent in that car too. Well, it's not every day I come across a 1960s Ferrari that's been sitting for decades, but unfortunately the owner isn't ready to sell. <laughs> He's not ready to let it go. So I might have to stay in touch with him on this one and see if down the road I can make an offer on it. But the car looked really solid, even with the decent interior. So it's hard to see something like that just sitting when you could do something with it and make it amazing again. So I was able to buy one of the cars that you just saw in the video, but I'm not gonna tell you until next week when it shows up here. That's gonna be the surprise. But I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again for tuning into our channel and stay tuned for more adventures. And if you wanna find out which car I bought out of that parkade, you have to watch again in a week or so when it comes to the house. We'll see you all soon. Happy holidays to everyone out there and bye for now. Mm -hmm.